welcome back. The amalgamation of northern and southern protectorates of Nigeria in 1914 by the British overlord has remained controversial. Some believe it was contrived by the colonial authority to sustain the unenviable northern protectorate. This group believed that the north has remained an economic parasite on the naturally endowed southern protectorate of Nigeria. But the north posits that the marriage was between an ordered and cultured society on the one hand and on the other hand between an impetuous, aggressive and savage group. Even the found, founding fathers of Nigeria did not help matters. Is this really a problem? I'm being joined by Monde Ubani and Shete Oludele, both with me in the studio, both public affairs analysts. You're welcome to the broadcast. Thank you. Good afternoon, Nigerians. Mm, and happy Independence Day mm -hmm. to you both. Same here. I don't want to ask you how you're spending your Independence Day <laughs> because you're here with us in the studio. <laughs> so um, you heard what I said. I, maybe I want to start with um, Mr. Obani. What do you feel when people say that the amalgamation was a mistake? What, what, what should you say to such people? Well, you have to uh, look at it from maybe your own point of view and then probably arrive at a conclusion. At the point the amalgamation took place, uh, it was for the economic interest of Britain. You know, they, they had to consider their own economic interest, and it was clearly advantageous for them at that point, you know, to join North and Southern protectorates. Uh, but the point is that nations do not emerge that way. Okay. Even after you have probably due to circumstances at that time that made it imperative for you to do what you did that the opportunity must also be given to the people to decide whether they want to be together. And that opportunity up to now has not been given uh, to the Nigerian people to actually decide, you know, whether they all uh, wanted to be the way the British uh, had done it. And that is a critical problem. And, and, and as long as that problem has not been solved, you know, it will remain, you know, uh, something that is, uh, you know, probably drawing, drawing us backwards. Now, the point is this. If you want to be together, nations emerge by consensus, and then you draw up the terms and condition under which you want to be together. As I said earlier, that opportunity was never given, and because it, it served their economic interests at the point where they did what they did, you know. So if we have not really sat down as a nation to look at ourselves holistically, look at what the imperatives for staying together and whether the terms and conditions are fulfilled, it will remain the way it is, you know, that people will still be agitating, and that agitation continues even up to now. Mm. Okay, I want to put the terms and conditions mm. and imperatives to one mm. side and mm. just say, repeat what you said to Mr. Uh, Chateau, and say, you know, we haven't been given the opportunity as a nation to decide whether we want to be together or not. But some would say that having lived together, as it were, for 59 years, if someone, a man and a woman, have co you know, cohabited together, you may as well call that a marriage. So are we saying, he's saying, you know, are we saying that all these years we haven't benefited from our togetherness? Please come in. Um, we have benefited to a little extent. Okay. Yes, but before I do, very quickly, I, I'd like to corroborate what he said. We should uh, understand amalgamation within the context of a colonial state. And the colonial state uh, had um, predetermined and um, economic and political interests, you know. And uh, was, there was a deeper interest of, um, of um, you know, extending its, um, its control beyond its immediate territory. That was the era of, um, you know, empire states, an empire state that had satellite states. Mm -hmm. And the satellite states, you know, existed to serve specific economic interests of the metropole, you know, or the core capitalist states. Okay. So we should understand it within that context. But since um, independence or political or flag independence, mm -hmm. um, we, we, that question might be meaningful that, you know, what has the political class been able to do to address the contradictions and the structural imbalances that were occasioned by colonial rule. Okay, yeah, and like I say, yes. that's, that's yes. a conversation we now yeah. have to yes. have. But before yes. that, yes. may I call you Monday? Yes. <laughs> okay, so, and may I call you Dele? Yes, it's so, okay for me, yes. Okay, um, Dele just said um, that 
we need to come together to determine the circumstances of our coexistence. That's right. um, but I want to ask, you know, and he also said that we have benefited a little bit. Mm -hmm. uh, you share his view that we've benefited a little bit before I go on to ask the next question. <laughs> Except it, I didn't there, have the opportunity no to expash it. Uh, there is no way we would have stayed we'll together to for 59 yeah. without benefiting. Okay. You know, a little, if bit. A little Okay, so I want you to help us quantify mm. that little bit so that mm. we don't lose focus of, you know, as they say, we don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. To what extent have we benefited as a nation? From there is benefit in, 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 in larger population. Okay, strength you know, numbers. Yeah, there is strength, so much strength in it. Mm. And then we have uh, our diversities, you know, is clearly understood, you know, by some of us. I, I, I served in North. Okay. Mm, I served in Kano. I did my youth service in Kano. And originally you're from? I'm from, from East. Okay. Uh, you know, I'm from Abia State. Okay. You know, so when the opportunity came for me to really understand, you know, study the cultures of the, of the Northern people, they call Northern, I went to Kano and I saw, you know, our differences, you know, and, and our similarities, you know, there are things that are similar. And a lot of Igbos are also married to the, I mean, to the people from the, from the North and, and vice versa. If you do business also with some of them and all that, some of them are very honest, the same thing with Igbos, you know. So, what I'm trying to say, without that, you know, we being brought together, you to know, interact. to interact, you know, there wouldn't have been that advantage of knowing, you know, some of their things and then knowing us and all that. So, there are, there are advantages, okay. you know, but the basic thing is how do nations emerge? And that is a critical thing, you know, and, you know, taking into cognizance, you know, the way we've been wobbling, you know, as a nation. Wouldn't it have been better if it is done, things were done differently? Okay. You know, so we have the right foundation. Yeah, to the foundation is said. Because the Bible says, when the foundation be destroyed, there is nothing the righteous can do. If you look at the foundation of this country, it's very shaky. For 59 years, we have not been able to have a right, firm foundation. Okay. Issue of value. You know, you know, what do we really understand as our objective as core a nation, values. core values, what do you want to achieve as a nation? And that's why leaders come into, into a position of, of authority. They, they, they start doing things that are different, at variance with nationhood. You know, in appointment, in some of the statements we make, and there is nothing that, you know, shows there is a core understanding of what nationhood is all about and how to cement relationship and build a strong, viable nation that would be in the interest of every other person. You know, so that, that is the point. So unless we sit down to agree on those core values, you know, we keep on wobbling. And my fear is that even in 100 years' time, wow. you know, our children will also be sitting on television and be talking about the problems of, you know, nationhood, you know. Wow. Whereas other nations like Singapore, like Malaysia, that were doing better than, you know, in the 60s, you know, uh, uh, maybe by that time... They would have gone to, they would be living in the moon. Oh my, <laughs> may that not happen to us. But you said you didn't have a chance to expand on what you mm. had said about well, us benefiting a little bit, or was there something else? Well, the, let me make the point that um, the most states are federating, and very few states are disintegrating, except there are structural and historical base imperatives to disintegrate. Okay. There the, are the, the strong benefits, you know, to federate, to become bigger, you know, economic and political benefits. Okay. The, the U.S. Federation, an Indian Federation, the yeah. Swiss Confederation, yeah. you know, Even Canada, etc. European, et European Union, mm. you know, NAFDAQ mm. and Maghreb Union, yeah. you know, uh, and Mint and BRICS should be understood within that context. So, yeah. uh, you know, it's um, the, the political and economic advantages that Nigeria is bigger, you know. Uh, we should ordinarily you know, exploit those, you know, the, the size, you know, and the diversity to advantage. Okay. Well, except that, uh, you know, somewhere along the line, the politicization of our diversities, okay. you know, have, uh, have produced and deepened, you know, you know, uh, the contradictions uh, within Nigeria, mm. within Nigeria. Okay. You know, um, secondly, you know, he talked about diversity, you know, uh, the, the the diversity is um, it's, it's equally commendable, mm -hmm. but it it's, uh, it is equally produced what we call in political science the question of identity politics, okay. you know religious identity, ethnic identity, religio religious identity, regional identity, sub regional identity, mm -hmm. and so on and so forth. Well, I said that the Nigerian state, you know, has lacked the capacity to mediate, you know, the centrifugal forces that underpin these identities, you know. Uh, we Which are? I want you to identify one of these centrifugal forces that underpin 
these identities. I like, I like that expression. Yeah, the, 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 <laughs> the, the, you know, some of the centrifugal forces are the politicization of religion, okay. the ethnicization of politics, mm. you know, and so on and so forth. Okay. You know, okay. the, these are issues that, that threaten the polity. These are issues that threaten the, the superstructural foundations okay. of the Nigerian states, okay. you, you know. You know, you know. Yeah. The 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 other benefits, you know, I, I could mention. Well, you know, one or two others. Uh, you know, the, the fact of uh, the, the 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 economic size, the economic advantage, the comparative cost advantage that w w could accrue to Nigeria as a nation state, okay. uh, and uh, the political implication in terms of power politics in the region and sub-region. Okay. But there's a lot more to talk about mm. the minuses, okay. you know. Than the, the positive. Yes, than the positive. Okay, than well, the well let, me, let, me, the let me just positive. say at this point, and like a kind of milestone, that if I get the two of you gentlemen right, you're both saying, you're not necessarily saying we should go our separate ways. You're saying we should get the foundation for staying together right. Is that correct? Well, that, would that be a correct summation? In, in my own uh, uh, case, uh, I, I appreciate the fact that due to their economic interests, they marched us together. Yes. And we came together with all our differences. Now, what you need to do for such a country that emerged in such a manner to stay together and live healthily is now to apply the, the, the right nutrition. Okay. If you don't apply the right nutrition, then that particular uh, this thing you have uh, built may likely die. Mm. It becomes uh, dead mm. due to the fact that the right food is not being given. Now, we are said to be a federation. In practice, there is nothing federating about you. Mm. In the, what we are practicing is pure unitary system of governance, you know, and that's why we still have to go back to the basic question of restructuring. Mm. Uh, I agree that we have come together, you know, by British, uh, uh, you know, idea, you know, even though we didn't sit down to agree. Now that we have said to be a, we are said to be a federation. What are the ingredients of federalism? What are the right structure for you to operate those different, uh, you know, this in, in a country that is as big as Nigeria? And that has not been done. The military incursion distorted everything about Nigeria. And so what is being fed is that you are being given the wrong nutrition. And as long as the wrong nutrition is being fed to this particular country called Federal Republic of Nigeria, you find out that if care is not taken, if care is not taken, that particular federation will die a natural death. So that's the issue. So it, we all agree that there is advantages in coming together and all that. But if the right food is not being applied, which is what all the people that have studied this nation is now saying, the elders, hmm. we have looked at the structure. There is so much imperfection in this structure. And if you allow this structure to continue, Nigeria will, atroph no. Nigeria will die a natural death. Interesting. Mm. OK, well, we just started this discussion on our amalgamation and, mm. and whether it's the right, we're, we're on the right platform. And my guests in the studio have given us to understand that we are not, we're lacking the right foundation and something needs to be done in order for us to proceed. I, I, I'm sure I'm speaking for both of them. Um, we're just going to go on a brief break. And when we come back, we'll continue to explore the unity, the unity of our nation. Okay, we're still on the Independence Day special broadcast. My name is Ekene, and with me in the studio are two special guests, Dr. Deli Shetolu, uh, it's good to have you. And also Mr. Ubani, who is also, uh, well, he's a public affairs analyst and a lawyer. It's good to have you with us. My pleasure. Okay, well, before we went on that brief break, we were talking about issues regarding amalgamation of Nigeria, possible uh, dysfunctional foundations, and hopefully we'll be looking at the, the way forward. I just want to take it from there slightly and, and just leave you this thought. I was reading an article recently, and I think maybe even yesterday, a Kerry Delu spokesperson was saying, you know, and I took it that he was saying the glass is half full, where, whereas a lot of us look at it as though the glass is half empty. And this is what he said. He said, many countries would have disintegrated with half of the challenges being faced by our country. Um, so he would say, based on that, that the unity of the country is the greatest achievement of the government. I wouldn't necessarily put it to the government, but I would say that the fact that we're still together is, is something remarkable in itself. Would you agree with that? Well, to a to, to, to little extent, Okay. Yes. Why are you uh, so conservative about? Yes, yeah, to, to lead to extent, uh, there the are reasons. Okay. Um, 
we should situate unity within context. You know, uh, I, I rather prefer that the unity of the Nigerian state, you know, is based on equity and fairness, okay. you know, and, uh, and equality. Okay. So the question is, is the Nigerian Federation as constituted based on equity and fairness and equality? Okay. okay. Secondly, um, are the component units, are the ethnic nationalities, are the social classes satisfied or dissatisfied? Okay. with the power relations and distribution of resources and distribution, redistribution of resources within the polity. Would you say they were? You know, they're not. Yes. They, they're not. They're not satisfied. You know, totally. There's been a perception, and it's also a reality, okay. that several parts of the Federation are alienated from the polity. Okay? So, you know, the question of alienation is central to power distribution and power politics okay. in any federal or multi, you know, multi-ethnic society. Okay, you. you know, and yeah. that question has not been addressed in Nigeria. So it, it erodes the question of unity mm. in Nigeria. Okay. Fourthly, the political class in Nigeria is primitive and backward wow. and ideologically bankrupt. And we cannot be discussing the question of unity in a society where the ideology is politics of the belly and prebendalism. You know. that's, that's, that's a heavy punch you just landed there. I, I just want to ask, though, because a lot of people would still bring it back to us, the people who voted these so-called primitive and backward political class in. Are we saying that we couldn't have, even if it meant us participating, putting ourselves forward, have made sure that we had a better crop or a more representative crop of politicians well, governing I, I, us? I, I, have, I, have, I, have my, I have my regrets and I have my doubts about the bourgeois politics Nigeria practices. Okay. The bourgeois politics is decorated politically. And most of the Nigerian people are not inclusive in the political process. But, I've just but come if out you ask me, sorry, go on. The, the, the politics has constituted, has constructed a lineage more of the people than it, it accommodates and includes. You know, the bourgeois process, in my view, is not likely as constituted, and the political space as constituted is not likely to, to exit Nigeria you know, from the tools of dependency and underdevelopment and deprivation. You know, we, we need to rethink our politics. We need to rethink the nature of contestation of political power in Nigeria. We need to rethink power politics and distribution of power. These are questions that are central and are germane to the future of Nigeria as a federation, to the future of Nigeria as a polity and a political economy. We're not addressing those questions. Mm -hmm. And the politics and the political process are not addressing those questions, in my opinion. Okay, well, Monday. <laughs> um, he's saying we need to rethink the way we do politics mm. in Nigeria. And, and maybe you can help us with that because, yeah. you know, people are trying to see how do we see this, uh, I don't want to use the word revolution, of our political practice in Nigeria. How will it come about if that is the, where we start in terms of, you know, resuscitating ourselves? Yeah, what, what uh, the, uh, the lecturer is saying is that the way the Nigerian system is working, is working to the advantage of a few set of people. And that's why, you know, the, what you read from uh, Akredo Liu's uh, advisor, mm -hmm. you know, he was mentioning unity. And according to him, for the fact that we have not been separated means that we are united. Mm -hmm. he, he, he may have gotten it wrong. You know, from the look of things, Nigeria is working only for some few, few people. Okay. And that's the danger. If you, if you tell them that Nigeria is not united, they will just you know, write you off and say you are not saying the right thing. If you tell them Nigeria is not working, they tell you that Nigeria is working. You know, a few people who are in government who are benefiting from the system will tell you that Nigeria is working. Everything is fine. You know? After all, they, they, when they are going, they go with all manner of security apparatus, go with all the latest cars, you know, sometimes 30, 40 cars following the governor, you know, as an entourage. You know? So to them, Nigeria is working. But to majority of Nigerians, Nigeria is not actually working. Okay. And we need to do something about getting the Nigerian consciousness to actually be aroused. Okay. Uh, look at the big, is it uh, the Nigerian program that is going on, you know, uh, they call it uh, BBN. Okay. You know, if you see how many Nigerians are voting, how much money that is being wasted, you know, voting for that particular program, you, 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 you will cry for Nigeria. The same set of youth you ask to come and participate in the political process. Okay, Big Brother in Nigeria. Big Brother Nigeria, okay. Nigeria okay. BBN. They will not. 
The same thing when you have when you do a program now where musicians will come and sing and dance and they dance naked and all that. You see all the youth will be there. When it is time for election to choose leader, leaders, we are talking about that supposed to run Nigeria. These guys will not participate. These girls will not participate. But they're interested in things that are frivolous. May but things that may, has may to do with help, their future. May I just help? Yes. Put, uh, maybe try and identify the, the yes. space these youths yes. you're, you're referring to yes. may be in. Yes. Um, and some may say which came first, the chicken or the yes. egg. Yes. If Paradventure, you're yeah. in a country where you feel your efforts yes. will not yield much. Yes. We see people being made an example yes. of. We see show yes. We see yes. other people who have tried to speak out being yes. silent. Yes. Might you not be saying to yourself, yes. sir, that is it not better for you to eat and sing and just enjoy the little life you can but enjoy? But that is a wrong, as I say, is a wrong posture. It's a wrong procedure. Okay. It's a wrong process. Because the Americans that we're talking about, the Britain, we're talking about all the other developed nations. You know, it got a stage also in their historical, you know, life like this. Where life was not rosy, where things are not moving, but some people say, no, it cannot continue this way. Mm. And they have to now say, no, this is the way for us, because we constitute the majority. The moment you give up and say, oh, the man that is doing it now is in prison and all that, so all of us should go and sleep, then the country will become worse. And then our own children, our children will be compromised. So what I'm saying is that that is not how the world works. The world works for those who feel that we cannot sit down and allow this bad system to continue. Okay. So the majority must come together to okay. change the system. Because okay. the people that are misruling us and putting us into this quagmire are less than 10%. Whereas 90 we just give up, you know, easily. That is not the way for us to go. So instead of going to go and enjoy that music, I'm not asking you not to enjoy your music because in develop they enjoy. But before they enjoy, they first of all have put their country in order. Can't we get this country running? Let's get a country that is running for us. Let's get a country that is also running for the future of our children. You know, rather than wasting all that time that the youth supposed to use their energy in order to get their country fixed, you know, they engage it negatively in things that are supposed not to benefit, you know, us in any way. That is my take in all this. I understand what you are just saying, that with all your vote not counted, you know, why would you want so to go and wait? I said, no. What people call it is for you now to say, no, my vote must count. We did it in 2015. And we must continue to do it even from now onwards that our vote must count. When the majority come together, they cannot in any way alter the result when the majority say, no, this is what our result is. So I'm saying that Nigerians must, the, the followership also must reawaken their consciousness. The way we are now, the way we are taking to other things that are negative, that is not in any way building the country, will not help us at all. Don't give up. I'm ensuring and assuring Nigerians you not to give up. We must get a country that is working and the destiny of this country is clearly in our hands. Okay. Dele. Yes. Monday has just been talking about the youth yes. predominantly. Do you share his view? Do you feel that the baton is in their hands? I mean, will they not be right in looking to us if we don't term ourselves youth, that is, and saying, what did you do when it was your turn to exactly. run the relay race? Why are you now telling us to go and, you know, maybe you ran the race and you were coming instead of second, you are now fourth, and you're now telling me to overtake third and second to get into first place. You've given me too much of a, uh, do you say, deficit to try and cover, you know, so... Who will begin to take responsibility for where we are now? That's the first question. And then can you tell me what you see as the way forward? Well, the, the political class should take responsibility. But they're not about to. You know, so what do we do? For the deficit. Mm. You know, it has failed. That's okay. the point. The political class has failed. It, it's, uh, and the state, the Nigerian state is an is amoral state and ideologically bankrupt. Okay. And it's a failing and, you know, and, and receding state. So it lacks the capacity. So, so we're, we're, here you we know, are it, now. It lacks the capacity to effectuate differences in the socioeconomic life of the youth. You know, secondly, you know, the, 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 the governing class lacks a clear-cut ideological base to govern. But sir, you, know, you in just terms said that they're bankrupt, yes. they, clear, they lack the capacity, yes. and yet you say they will be the ones to do it. I'm saying what it, do it, we do yes, practically yes, since yes. they are not capable, in your opinion, it, yes, of, of Yes, we change. need to recreate the states. Okay. We need to recreate the states and we need to transcend the bourgeois politics. If okay. you ask me, most of the political parties have not shown the capacity to offer political and economic alternatives to okay. Nigeria. We need political alternatives. You know, and that would also, by extension, create uh, a new, you know, factions of the political class so, so let, that let, will produce let's alternatives. Let's take it one step at a time. We need to recreate the states. How yes. do we begin? And who are you referring to? Mr. Obani or, or Monday has looked at the youth. Yes. Who are you looking at when you say we? And, and how do we begin to recreate the state? What do we do? What are our first steps? Right. Recreating the state 
could take the form of reform, you know, political reform. Okay. How the question is, how that? do we go about the reform? Thank it, you. It, it could be through constitutional process. Okay. It could be through political restructuring. It, it could be through political, you know, uh, redefinition. You know, or but the then you're, you're back again at the mercy of you the know, same political class you, you, know, you say are yes. bankrupt. Because for you yeah. to do those things, yeah. you still have to engage with no. the political class you have termed no, as no, bankrupt. No, no, no. But we should bear in mind that the political class is not a monolith. Okay. There are fractures of the political class. I'm a member of the political class, okay. in a sense. Good. I'm a member of a political party. Good. My political party don't consider the minor party. But we own a political party. Okay. And we're mobilizing for political change. We're posing political alternatives. Okay. We're posing economic alternatives. Okay. Except that, you know, we lack the financial base at this point to, 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 and we do not intend to monetize the political space. Yes. The point I'm making is, you know, the, the fractions of the political class, you know, that have been dormant, that have been laid back, should be more aggressive, okay. and should contest the space okay. with the dominant political class, and begin to ask more and greater questions. You know, the political superstructure as constituted will not take Nigeria far. And I'm insisting that, you know, the dominant fraction at, 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 at compromise the polity, at compromise the political economy. Mm -hmm. And that makes it imperative for the other factions, you know, that the other factions should be more organized, should be more cohesive, and should be better focused. Let me situate it within context. Okay. Well, I, I'm, I'm a new Marxian academic. Okay. Okay. And I also belong so to mean, what we call the broad... believe in a socialist yes, kind of... Yes. We belong to the broad left in Nigeria. Okay. We have formed political parties So you're looking towards things like a welfare state? We're, we're, you know, beyond the welfare state. Okay. We have formed political parties in, the, you know, in our different points in time. But guess what? Unfortunately, we had differences you know, polemics, on, on strategies, on tactics, on how to proceed and all that. Mm. And to that extent, we've not been able to constitute a cohesive and broad point to confront the bourgeois and predated class. Okay. That, that's the kind of approach I'm referring to. Okay. So we should all get you know, involved. The bourgeois politics and neoliberal politics, you know, and marketization have failed this country. It has impoverished and alienated the Nigerian people. I'm saying that we should pose alternatives. Okay. The youth you talk about. The youth, it, the, the youth is compromised. Mm. The youth is de-ideologized. Okay. But the question is, who would re-ideologize the okay. youth? Okay. We need the state and the political class to re-ideologize the youth. But this political class is a bankrupt class, and it lacks the capacity, morally and politically, to re-ideologize. And that's the more reason we need to recreate the state, okay. and we need to recreate politics. Wow. The youth can be led. They're willing to be led. They, they wouldn't mind you know, a, a leadership that has the character and that, that, that has the charisma. So you know, what Robert Dahl calls charismatic leadership. Okay. They wouldn't mind, but they, they want to see it. They want to see it offered. And demonstrated. I, I'm sure that they want to see it demonstrated. Okay. okay. You know, and I'm sure the Nigerian youth will be willing to be led. You recall that the point before the introduction of SAC and before the militarization of the political space. We had student movement that was ideologically correct in Nigeria, okay. that was politically correct and politically focused, and that joined every progressive struggle in Nigeria to redeem Nigeria's political space. At that point, the youth were, were consistent, were politically correct, they were mobilized, they were ideologically coherent. But what happened? At a point, the state you know, intruded into the student movement and bastardized the movement okay. and deliberately, you know, disoriented the movement to serve the adv political advantage of the predatory, mm. you know, and the backward political class. Okay. So the, the youth, as, you know, the youth has the potential. Okay. A lot will depend on the state and the political class okay. to offer leadership. This state is not offering the leadership. At, you know, this political class is not offering the leadership. Okay. And that's the more reason I'm conversing for you rethinking so offer, of the state. Offer alternatives. You know, and mm. political alternatives within the context of, you know, new political parties. Okay, well, Monday, you've heard the passion with which he's expressing his, his desire for us to move forward. Mm. Uh, do you share his views to begin with? Yeah. <laughs> Yes, uh, we need to we need to have a, a new framework okay. you know, in politics. You know, we need to move away uh, from the circle in which we are in, which is completely dead. If we, if we go in this paradigm, we are not going to make any progress. So, a new paradigm shift, you know, is what is actually required. And a new set of, you know, uh, youths, you know, with proper orientation.
you know, with the ideal of the of the seventies, the eighties, you know, which he talked about, you know, remember when students NAN, National Association of Nigerian Students, you know, were speaking with one voice, and they joined the progressive, you know, uh, to ask for you know development of the country. But what do we have now, we have youth that are cl clearly disoriented. You know, they some of them into four one nine, some of them into you know we get rich quick, some of them into excessive pleasure. Gangsterism. Yeah, gangsterism and all man, you know, and all that. You know, they you know they introduce all this cultism into university mm. that the entire system became bastardized. That you never can now enter into a university and have maybe a situation where over sixty percent of students are, you know, progressive, you know, ideal minded of a, an ideal society. You know, so it's a, it's a, it's a whole lot. Mm. We need to do a lot, honestly, uh, because I, I am beginning to even doubt the future of this country with the kind of ideas of the youth. Okay. You sit down, you talk with them. You so know. Your, your problem they're, they're, is not so much with the political class as yes, it is with the with, with the people with the that, youth. With the, that that will now, that form the majority that can take over the the, the system and, and 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 manage this country the way it's supposed to be managed. Because the poli the elites have failed. The political elite have failed. So why will you not continue to look towards you know issue of salvation from the same people that have failed you and they're not ready to make any amendment? It's for a new set of people to you know come up with a new idea that this is how we want our country to be. Okay. Because we have read other, how other nations, you know, we are rescued by people who sat down and said, no, it can't continue this way. They, we, we also can play our own part and all. That's the only way. And then they have one mind. They don't look at the ethnicity. They don't look at all those primordial sentiments. They will not look at them. They look at one Nigeria. Irrespective of where you come from, we must rescue this country. So this is a kind of new orientation. But I don't know how we are going to imbibe because when I post something on, on the social media and I see reaction of youth and all that, I'm totally discouraged. Mm -hmm. Their idea, they are so, they are so empty. They are so bereft of any ideology, you know, they don't even understand anything at all. Okay. Yeah? So that, that is a, it's a whole lot of problem. We have a lot to do in our hands. But God will help us in this serious advocacy we have engaged in. Yes, no, thank you yeah. very much. I mean, yeah. and, and I guess as we come to the end of this segment, uh, or we're going on a brief break, let me not wrap things up just yet, because there's more conversation to be had. But I guess the hope we have is that just as you have a few you know, you have miscreants in, in any society. You have a few good men and women mm -hmm. in the midst of that. So we're still hopeful that in the midst of what we've described as sometimes dysfunctional, sometimes mm -hmm. bereft of ideology, mm -hmm. there will still be those amongst us who have a passion for Nigeria That's and right. who want to see a better tomorrow. I think this is where I we're we're. Too. So as we continue this conversation, we're still on our special broadcast. We're going to be looking at other issues around governance, um, and uh, we hope you'll stay tuned and continue to enjoy our discussions on this platform. So thank you, gentlemen, for this interesting conversation. It's been a pleasure engaging with you. Uh, please, yeah, I hope uh, I want to say thank you to Mr. Dele and uh, also to Mr. Monday. It's been a pleasure having you on the broadcast. Thank you, Akene. Okay. Thank um, If Please feel free to contribute and do contribute because we love hearing from you to these conversations on any of our social media platforms. Uh, don't forget to put the hashtag Nigeria of my dreams. My time is done here. I'll be bringing in my colleague, Felicity Ezenwike, who, Ezenwike rather, who will be joining me on this uh, platform. But in the meantime, stay with us. We'll be talking more issues as we go along. <laughs>